Hi lovely friends, welcome back. My name is Yibid. This project I have called The Black Forest, which you've probably worked out already if you can read. Uh, the Black Forest to me, I think, represents the darker side of any forest. And uh, researching for this journal, I came across a small um, tourism article, uh, a guy called Ben Tarring. Um, who's very entertaining if you care to look him up, T-A-R-R-I-N-G. And just Google his name along with uh, Black Forest Fairy Tale. So he takes his um, three unbelieving teenage daughters on like a fairy tale trip um, to the Black Forest. And something he said I thought was very interesting, if I can find my bit of paper... He says, forests can be forbidding or uplifting, depending on the light, the weather and your state of mind. And as well as being physically important to our planet and our environment, um, Mr. Taring says that Germany's ancient beech forests have world heritage status. Uh, and so, as well as that, they also have this very powerful spiritual presence and importance and the forest features almost as a being in itself um, or its own entity in so many of our stories and folklore and there is so much um, powerful imagery that I wanted to capture some of that um, darker side the um, unfamiliar slightly less welcoming side of any forest and this is the inspiration for my journal. So we will open her up and take a look. I'm going to remove this little decoration. Okay. So when I think about Black Forest, or the Black Forest, on the one hand, there is um, the little gingerbread house and the cottage in the woods. And on the other side, there is the um, the Gothic castle. So there is a little of both in this one, um, with that kind of fairy tale imagery. Let's take our hearts for a walk in the woods and listen to the magic whispers of old trees. So I've done um, Big End Papers again. I really like this effect. Um, of course, it's a more traditional um, bookbinding method to have this protective paper on the first page that goes all the way. And what you will find with almost any hardbound book in your house, that the, because you have this first page... Um, applied after the binding of the book and um, this gets glued here in a thin line so you always have this um, page that doesn't really want to open properly so this is traditionally like a title page or just a blank page it's not really a page that um, you would normally be reading text from so I've just put this here a little print uh, transfer rather of this plant and um, the papers are tea dyed and inked. So um, I think that's probably the main feature of this book. Um, a lot of inking and um, patterning effects using plants. Um, oh, one thing that we're not going to find in this book is birds, fluffy bunnies, butterflies, things like that. Um, because I wanted that more um, unwelcoming side to come through. Um, no flowers either. Um, we were very recently um, walking in a thick, thick, thick pine forest. And it was quite a scary place and... Um, a very surprising place. Uh, the the road that we were walking was actually alongside 
but when you looked off the road um, and into the forest it was so very very dark in um, in the middle of the day that it was very disconcerting um, some decoupage down here all the um, journaling cards are glued to tea dyed paper and have a stamp different stamps on the back yeah it was so um, peculiar and unwelcoming um, it was so thick in fact you probably couldn't walk off road um, it had there was this really thick um, blanket of fur, ne fur what's it called fur needles pine needles on the floor creating this peculiar cushion under your feet and the, the sound even becomes dead really it's it's a very peculiar and unsettling feeling and this is part of what I wanted to capture so I found lots of beautiful um, old paintings of forests some are fairy tale uh, this is your that thing I've used very little um, printed text in this book I've just used a few um, book pages but uh, not very many uh, this is um, gingerbread house of course this is taken from a um, a non-fiction book about fairy tales I always wonder about this woman who lived in the woods she probably moved there for a reason I can't help feeling um, and then starts getting uh, bugged by these uh, children <laughs> she's probably moved there to get away from people and really, I mean, who of us hasn't wanted to roast our own children at some time or another? I know I have. So um, I think that there is probably two sides of that story. The old woman in the woods. I've been looking up quite a lot also on that subject of the um, Grimm's brothers the Grimm brothers, sorry the little princess illustration down here is very pretty uh, the, the brothers Grimm of course we know that the um, the fairy tales that they wrote are really grim and we kind of prefer the sanitised versions these days. These are skeleton leaves. Um, but what I didn't realise was that their stories um, had a lot of historical significance and um, being interested in history. They actually collated their stories from folklore um, so maybe they weren't as grim as we imagined them to be, but they were just recording things that were already there in a lot of the cases. And of course, forests can be dangerous places. And you wonder whether many of these stories came about to um, deter children from straying into the woods, you know, when they shouldn't be. I made some um, handmade stamps, um, which I think you've seen a couple already, of um, some little mushrooms. And I used this one uh, as my inspiration. This is um, a very old Soviet painting, um, an illustration from a book, folklore book. 
It has these really pretty toadstools. And I've used this style for some of these stamps that I've made. That were a lot of fun. Here is some skeletonized flower petals um, in encased in tracing paper. And more toadstools. I'm hoping that a lot of these transfers will show on the camera. I know that it might be difficult to see some of them. You can see some fern leaves coming up here. You have to sometimes search for them and the longer you look at a page with these um, lovely inks on them. This one is just tea dyed. But um, with some of the ones like this, um, the longer you look at it, the more you can see sometimes. This is a specimen dried. There's some eco dyed fabric made into pockets here. Like so. So you can see um, how the, the leaves have layered over each other. So this, the black here from a, a dark oak leaf and it's, these little leaves have made a resist over the top. And they look really cool. This is a really cool image um, of a woman having a, a very bizarre dream. A bear there carrying her off in the night. I don't know if he's uh, feeling hungry or if he's protecting her from something. This is um, a pocket. Oh, and a thing inside. I've put a... Um, Artificial leaf as some of the little tabs. Uh, poem, that's another hand card stamp. This is the image from the front of the book. There's some more skeletonized flowers here. Unfortunately, the light comes from the that side of my room, and um, I think that some of the dark images get lost on the camera because of the way the light hits it. But there are so many beautiful illustrations to be found in this kind of genre. This is a p tracing paper pocket. paper. So I'll put some more leaves here. There are four more journaling cards in the two pockets. More handcuff stamps here. This is um, extra paper. Over here, this is 
eco-dyed calico. Um, it's been through the typewriter, it says once upon a time. And it has a few pages for notes there. I don't know if you can see this patterning effect on the camera. Um, I use this for my ocean journal. I don't know if you you might remember um, on yellow pages because it reminded me of patterns in the sand. And here it's reminding me in these darker colours of lichen on the forest floor and on the trees. So I've used it again here quite a few times. This is one of the Margaret Tarrant fairies. This is Jack Frost doing his thing. This is beautiful. This is one of my favourites. It's an old Soviet style again. Look at those little toadstools, aren't they cute? And the foreign text. Foreign text is so cool. <laughs> Especially when you don't know what it says. And I have no idea what that says. That one seems to have gone in upside down. This is um, the usual alphabet cards. I've done um, two different gothic alphabets for you. Put this one that way. This is a handmade envelope. stitching down here. This is um, a tip in. This, this piece reminded me of tree bark. I think it looks really nice. So for some secret writing under there. Not 
this is a very beautiful painting. Um, I have dirtied this up a bit. It's been dyed, uh, tea dyed. So it's not a true representation of the colours. But if you wanted to look it up, um, it's very pretty. It has very um, delicate pastel colours all over. It's called The Dwarf's Dream. And it's so pretty. It has all these um, toadstools in this pretty indigo blue colour. She's sitting in like in a fairy ring of toadstools and they're growing up the trees here. Isn't that pretty? It says down here, his dream. He would bring her acorn cups and dew-drenched anemones and tiny glowworms to be stars in the pale gold of her hair. Isn't that pretty? Some more prints down here. Handcarved stamp. Another typewriter definition. For the library I've chosen Grimm's Fairy Tales. And here is one of these um, floating envelopes. I've chosen um, from the herb book Wormwood here. There is a illustration inside. And I've used Midsummer Night's Dream for this for the front piece. And there is one of these handmade vine paper clips with poison berries. So this is the handmade stamps that I made, um, three little sets so that they can be grouped together like this. And you can stamp different colours of course. Oops, sorry. Some more leaf prints here and that lovely patterning that we can see. Okay, um, I'm going to pause here because I'm nearly out of time on my camera and I will see you back later. Thanks guys.